Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Fearless Floyd Show. As always, I am your host, Fearless Floyd. What if I told you that uh, things could be a lot different in the United States of America instantly, overnight, with the stroke of a pen? And I know uh, you guys have seen this, and I keep kind of stressing on this because I want you to, sh I want to show you guys what's what's really going on because you may be missing it. You may not see the train wreck ahead, and put it that way. Make sure I've gotten everything um, straightened up, ready to go. I believe I do. So without further ado, let me dive in and share the screen. While I'm doing that, you can like, subscribe, share, hit that notification bell, leave a comment below. All right, there's no audio for this on purpose, but basically it's from your Reuters, and this is not new news. This is a couple days old, but Trump was found liable for fraud in New York. Civil case, okay? Civil case. Take note of that. So basically, uh, a New York judge found Donald Trump and his family business fraudulently inflated the value of his properties and other assets in a major defeat for the former U.S. president that could severely hamper his ability to do business in the state. The scathing decision by Justice Arthur Ngoron of New York State Court in Manhattan will make it easier for State Attorney General Letitia James to establish damages at a scheduled October 2nd trial, which is uh, like, what's that, Monday? Yep, Monday. Indoron also ordered the cancellation of certificates that let some of Trump's businesses, including the Trump Organization, operate in New York and ordered the appointment of a receiver to manage the business's dissolution. So basically, they're, uh, they've ordered that all Trump's businesses, including the Trump Organization that operate in New York, be dissolved. The judge described how Trump, his adult sons, Donald Jr. and Eric, the Trump Organization and other defendants made up valuations and inflated Trump's net worth to suit their business needs. That is a fantasy world and not real world, in Garon wrote. The judge also sanctioned the defendant's lawyers for making preposterous legal arguments and fueling their clients. Obst I've never even seen that word before. Obstropus, obstreperous conduct? <laughs> okay. I had to go look that one up. Trump and other defendants have argued that they never committed fraud and that the challenge transactions were profitable. They plan to appeal Ngoron's decision, of course. Today's outrageous decision is completely disconnected from the facts and governing law, Christopher Keis, a lawyer for Trump, said in a statement. President, President Trump and his family will seek all available appellate remedies to rectify this miscarriage of justice. James said she looks forward to presenting the rest of her case at trial. It's a devastating ruling, said Bill Black, distinguished scholar in residence for financial regulation at the University of Minnesota of Law. He said canceling business certificates could hurt Trump's ability to make money. If the decision is upheld, they have to liquidate the LLCs, which actually hold the enormous bulk of the assets, Black said, referring to the limited liability companies. Trump is seeking the Republican presidential nomination for 2024 and has maintained a commanding lead in the race, despite the criminal charges he faces in multiple cases and in multiple jurisdictions. In a post on his true social platform, Trump called accusations that he committed fraud ridiculous and untrue and blasted Ingor excuse me, Ingoron as a deranged judge doing the bidding of James, a Democrat. This is a democratic political lawfare and a witch hunt 
at a level never seen before. Trump wrote, if they can do this to me, they can do this to you. Trump has repeatedly asserted without evidence that indictments he faces are witch hunts, not immaterial. James sued Trump in 20, September 2022, accusing him, three of his adult children, and the Trump Organization of lying for a decade about asset values and his net worth to defraud banks and insurers into providing better terms. Ingeron said James submitted conclusive evidence that Trump had overstated his net worth by between 812 and $2.2 billion. Even in the world of high finance, this court cannot endorse a proposition that finds a misstatement of at least $812 million to be immaterial, he wrote. The judge said Trump's overvaluations, including his Mar-a-Lago estate in Florida, his penthouse apartment in Manhattan's Trump Tower, and various office buildings and golf courses. He took particular issue with Trump's claim that the penthouse was 30,000 square feet. 2,787 square meters, nearly three times its actual size, resulting in overvaluation as much as $207 million. Discrepancy of this order of magnitude by a real estate developer sizing up his own living space of decades can only be considered fraud, in Garan wrote. The judge said Trump also grossly overvalued Mar-a-Lago, estimating its worth as much as $612.1 million, though an assessor said its market value was no more than $27.6 million. Well, if you're a tax assessor and you're paying taxes on that property, yeah, you definitely want it at $27, not $612. But, you know, everybody likes to cheat on their taxes. Who doesn't like to? That's like, that's like baseball, apple pie, the American way, right? Apple pie, Chevrolet, and then I go Coca-Cola. Yeah. I'm just teasing. Nobody should cheat on their taxes. Absolutely not. If you're going to volunteer, you make sure you stay a volunteer. Ingeron also chided Trump for offering defenses in a deposition that were wholly without basis, including that there was nothing wrong with how he valued properties in a given year if their values subsequently went up. He also seems to imply that the numbers cannot be inflated because he could find a buyer from Saudi Arabia to pay any price he suggests, the judge wrote. Well, you know, I hate it when judges become experts in valuating property, and that happened to me before. So I totally get where they're coming from. Um, there should be like you know, some uh, appraisal by a uh, real estate <laughs> appraisal licensed or certified, whatever it is here in, here in Texas, they are uh, have to be licensed. So I understand, yeah, that uh, Trump probably could sell one of these to anybody, you know, Russian oligarch, you know, him and Putin are good buddies. Shoot, he could sell it to North Korea. They're buddies too. Slew of litigation. Ingeron's ruling comes three months after a state appeals court said that some of James's claims were too old because statutes of limitations had expired in either July 2014 or February 2016. Ingeron rejected Trump's argument that the decision essentially gutted James's lawsuit, which James has said reflected a series of continuing wrongs that she could prove at trial. The appeals court dismissed one defendant, Trump's daughter Ivanka, from the case. Trump also faces a slew of other litigation. He has pleaded not guilty to charges in four indictments, accusing him of trying to overturn his 2020 election defeat by Democrat Joe Biden, hoarding classified materials and covering up hush money payments to a porn star. Trump also faces a January civil trial where damages he owes for defaming the writer E. Jean Carroll, who he claimed raped her. He denied the wrongdoing. Ingeron's decision does not automatically mean James's fraud case will go to trial next Monday. Trump has sued to delay the trial, accusing Ingeron and James of ignoring the appeals court's order to narrow the case. He and other defendants, and by the way, that's called an interlocutory appeal, and that's what they are getting ready to do again, is do another interlocutory appeal 
actually they should have did, have done a writ of mandamus to the uh, issuing court of that superior court order. Just saying. I don't know anything about law. That's not legal advice. Don't listen to me. He and other defendants have said this has made it impossible to prepare for trial because they did not know which claims they would have to defend against, which is an apt argument. And they're more likely than not going to win that on the appellate level. And I would imagine the appellate court's going to come down real hard on that court as well as the uh, prosecution for doing that. That's my own opinion. The appellate court is expected to rule on the request for the delay or a delay this week. All right. So that's the fraud charge. So uh, 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 I bring this article up for one simple reason. As you see right here, the state of New York is trying to do what? cancellation of certificates that let some Trump's businesses, including the Trump organization, operate in New York and order the appointment of a receiver to manage the business's disillusion. All right. Now, Ivanka was included in this, and it was Donald Jr. as an Eric Trump organization. They have one uh, CEO. He's already been indicted and been processed through some other stuff. There's all kind of litigation going on with Trump. Very difficult to keep up with, uh, as well as his companies. I believe he has over 2,000 DBAs, if I remember correctly, or LLCs or a combination. Anyway, we'll get into the, some of this stuff here in a minute. <clears throat> About share. Back, move on to the next panel. Companies owned by former President Donald Trump. This is from Investopedia, and this is 2021. But I read this entire article, and like, um, most presidents, actually, the majority of presidents, there's a couple exceptions that we're going to address those. Uh, they put their assets in what's called a blind trust. All right. And the blind trust takes care of their assets while they are president for that term right here, blind trust. Trump didn't do that. Here's the exception. Imagine that President Barack Obama. The only one not born in the United States, America. Did I say that out loud? Sasha, that was her. She's throwing my voice again. Well, he ignored it. And in fact, Eric Trump, one of the trustees, told Forbes in early 2017 that he planned to regularly update his father on the Trump family businesses. The two eldest sons, Eric and Don Jr. are the trustees of the trust. So, uh, you know, here it is. They're talking about the trust. I'm not making this up. So, did he? Is are his assets still in the trust? And in the trust, that's questionable. Ah, uh, you really, you know, <laughs> ah, now you deal with trust law. You're in a whole new realm. But um, that's aside from the point. I just wanted to bring that up, kind of show you um, what he had going on. I don't know if he's still continuing that, but uh, it is what it is. Um, Oh yeah, well, I don't care. It is uh, basically I was looking for an article. I had I popped it up, but apparently I wasn't important. And I lost it. 
Uh, but the majority of Trump's properties are not in New York. Um, the Doral Golf Course in Florida, I believe it is. Uh, Mar-a-Lago is number five on the list. Um, uh, there's a, a place in Vegas, uh, a hotel in D.C. Lago, golf course, and Bensonhurst in Jersey. That's that, that not even a top property. I think, in my own opinion, looking at Trump, he's been divesting himself of New York, I would say, probably since the 2000s, probably after uh, the millennium. Kind of what it looks like to me. So uh, anything can happen. Anything's available. And I'm going to show you uh, some real scary stuff here. So hang on. I want to introduce you to uh, Trump's adversary. This is Letitia Ann James. And he references her now. And this is who's coming after Trump. And it would not surprise me at the... Not one bit. Not one bit. That this woman right here files a criminal RICO on all these people. Let me show you. Let me show you who I'm talking about. Sorry, I didn't have this one lined up. There you go. If it weren't for Baron Trump being 17 years old, and if he was 18 or 19, he would probably be included in this picture as a linchpin. However, Melania is the linchpin. His daughter. These two right here mean the world to that man. Those two do too, as well as his daughter-in-laws and daughter and son-in-law. Those two, a little different. Baron's in a whole new category. They're not going to be able to hold Baron hostage. But they can hold her hostage. And that's really going to mess with the psyche. I think this will happen in October of next year, 2024, right before the election. I think they will, New York will issue arrest warrants to lock up the entire Trump family if, if and only if, they cannot uh, prevail in some of these other jurisdictions or that they don't have complete lawlessness in enough large cities in the United States to suspend the elections by Joe Biden or his successor, which, you know, a year from now could easily be uh, in the cards, uh, declares a national emergency when we're all in lockdown. There is no election. And the Trump family's locked up. Our family, except for Barron. I wonder if they've made provisions for something like that to occur even to the potentiality where they cannot travel or at least travel to New York. A dilemma. Something to think about. 
So let me show you why I have such great concerns about all of this. Most everybody's just, you know, they're just pet, they're, they have tunnel vision. They're focusing on one issue, one item. They're not looking at the big, broad picture. I'm looking at the big, broad picture. As I've, you know, clearly shown you guys, um, let, me, uh, let me pop this up. What's up, Sash? Hmm. What's up, good girl? Well, you want to get on here and talk? Hmm. You want to run the show for me? Come on. It's your turn. Tag, you're it. You're it. No, she's not. Anyway, uh, I did this in, oh, God, 2017, I think. I posted it on Facebook. And ooh, wee, 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 wee. Because, you know, people don't understand my uh, political beliefs. You know, look, Democrat, Republican, both corrupt, evil organizations at its core. There's people in that in those two groups that are good people trying to do really good things, but you know, um, it's like being the skin on the other side of a rotten apple. You know, you're trying to do good on your side, but the other side, rotten to the core. Nothing you can do about it. You're still part of that apple. That's where we're at. And I keep telling you folks, as long as you use a two-party political system and they retain as much power as they do, and it's so institutionalized, we will never, ever, ever have a democracy of we the people. I promise you that. It will not function on a two-party system. Absolutely not. So anyway, um, what's clearly obvious, Donald J. Trump, is a New York real estate developer. He inherited the company, actually grew up in that life as he did with his own children um, and I guess now grandchildren. You know, people don't understand, especially people, you know, down here in the South where the, the, the mob, the mafia, the gangsters, the gangs, whatever you want to call them. Uh, they don't necessarily have to be the Italian mafia to be a mafia. There's a Russian mafia now, and there's, you know, all kind of these other foreign country mafias that are in the United States and operating fully. And of course, they're coming across the border just, you know, every day, all day, 24 7, open door. Thank you, Joe Biden. And increasing their, uh, their staff. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> I can't believe this country. Uh, that's just part of doing business on a daily deal. You know, the alderman, he needs to get greased. You know, the Teamsters need to get greased. Everybody's got to get greased under the table, you know. Union gigs. You got a 20-man call. And I count 12. Where's the other eight? Oh. Don't ask about those guys ever. You know what I mean? That kind of deal. So anyway, it's not hard uh, when you have to, you know, it's being in a new environment. Like pr easiest way for me to express it is when you go to prison, that's a whole new set of rules to live by. It's not like you live out here in the world. It's completely different. So you have to adapt. Okay. And that, you know, Donald Trump doesn't know any better. You know, if it costs an extra hundred bucks cash out of my pocket over here to make that truck get from A to B to get a job done. And, and that's what I got to do. And that's what it, normally my dad did. And everybody else does. <laughs> I'm doing it too. Because it's part of doing business in New York City. All that up there. Just the way it works. Sorry. End of story. So when they were prosecuting Donald J. Trump, um, most of this is based on um, evidence at the time, which has now, we all now know was based on a totally fraudulent 
story or a claim with the whole uh, steel dossier and Hillary creating all that and creating the whole Russia Trump deal. And uh, yeah, it just turned in one thing after another. Well, you know, they don't, the allegations don't necessarily have to be true as we all know, because they're allegations and you've got plenty of chance to be proven not guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, right? Not have to prove your innocence. Wink, wink, nod, nod. Got that. So anyway, uh, basically I wrote, a uh you know a rico indictment you know all this is links to the actual test you see with michael cohen's testimony uh at the time yeah the stick could could i write another one i'm almost positive i could write another one if i really 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 took my time and dug i could do it but it's all here all the, the violations the law how it applies definitions Oh, 2019 is when I wrote this. So, yeah, I got roasted uh, when I filed this by all my uh, Facebook friends that were, you know, these are my personal page that uh, are all Trump fans because they just, they blew up. They thought I was, you know, you're a liberal flaming, right? Our left winger. And I'm like, what? Are you serious? I don't care what party they are. I'm going to roast them. <laughs> I don't even care if they're affiliated with a party. If they're bad. I'm going to roast them. I'm going to call them out. I'm going to pick them out and choose them. <laughs> so let me get on. Get on with my getting on. So anyway, I showed you the basically the entire Trump family. Uh, I got that from CNN.com. So I'll give credit where credit is due. I did alter the picture. There was a uh, under 18 child in the picture. And I edited her out. So there's that. So I introduced this to uh, Leticia uh, James. I did. So in New York, New York, where they call Houston Houston. And this is fine law. And this is New York racketeering RICO laws. Fact check legal review. All right. So this is how it works. New York racketeering RICO laws, the basics. As with federal law, New York law also criminalizes the offense referred to as enterprise corruption. The enterprise corruption statute in New York's version of a federal RICO act and was added to the penal code or penal law by organized con Crime Control Act of 1986 to combat the diversified illegal conduct engaged in by organized crime, including the infiltration and corruption of legitimate enterprises. Now, <clears throat> I'm not going to have to go into all this for you, but I will tell you that New York adopted the federal RICO statute of Title 18, United States Code, sections 1961 through 1968, almost word for word. Uh, but for the most part, it's exactly the same. So consider it the same or any little nuances. Uh, you may want to go compare statutes word for word to determine whether or not both are in harmony. Now, RICO statute's real easy. Person is guilty of an enterprise corruption when having knowledge of the existence of a criminal enterprise and the nature of its activities and being employed by or associated with such enterprise, he or she intentionally conducts or participates in the affairs of an enterprise by participating in a pattern of criminal activity, intentionally acquires or maintains an interest in or control of an enterprise by participating in a pattern of criminal activity or participates in a pattern of criminal activity and knowingly invests in any proceeds derived from that conduct or any proceeds derived from the investment or use of those proceeds in an enterprise. The enterprise that is corrupted need not be the criminal enterprise by which the person is employed or with which he or she is associated and may be a legitimate enterprise. I'm not going to get into the rest of it because this isn't about the actual New York RICO statute. You're more than welcome to go read this yourself. 
It's in find law. Just pop it up. Boom, 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 boom. There it is. Dun, 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 dun. Tells you everything. I'm going to close that out. Now, why is that important? It's very important because, as you see, it, 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 it's a wide net. They can shoot first, ask questions later, very easily. Okay, he's already got what indictments in four different jurisdictions. He's probably got a couple more coming, if not three. Arizona, Michigan, possibly Wisconsin. Uh when the going gets tough, tough need to get going. So um it it's it's a heinous thing what's going on right now. It's uh, this is an atrocity. This is an assault on we the people of the United States of America. That's exactly what this is. Okay, this is they're they're using him. He's this is a proxy war. This is Joe Biden's war with Russia via Ukraine. This is the Democratic Party warring against Trump through we the people. We are suffering. You are seeing the border in the South wide open. WFO, wide open. They're coming across. Then they're sending all your tax dollars to Ukraine so they can launder it. Right? And then they're taking more tax dollars and they're putting these illegals up in hotels. Now they're kicking veterans, 95-year-old veterans out of nursing homes so they can give that bed up to, guess what, an illegal alien. I'm telling you, if you're a Democrat and you're still a Democrat and you still are going to be a Democrat and you're out and rallying and canvassing and soliciting for Democrats, you've lost your freaking mind. You are just in Saying if you think a wide open border is the right thing, is the most safest thing for you and your family, then maybe we should just move you right on down by the border, and you can get right in the middle of it. You can have people, you can have these illegal immigrants just walking across your front yard twenty four seven. Maybe even terrorists. You don't know. Bringing drugs, children, trafficking. To be sold for sex. Yeah, you're part of that. Absolutely. Girl, I'm not going to get into all that. So let me get on, move on with this. So that's what I'm trying to do. This isn't a rant for me. Um, now, why is this so important? Okay, because I told you about this woman, this Letitia James right here. Okay, how much power she has. So you see she filed the civil RICO and she's winning temporarily. What she's doing is setting him up for the criminal RICO. She wants to make sure that when she does it, it sticks. She's trying to make Trump disappear. You haven't noticed. You haven't figured that out. It kind of sucks when you've been a part of the system and now the system is turned against you and you're standing alone holding your thing going, what the hell just happened? Where'd everybody go? Why are my colleagues and friends not speaking to me and answering the phone and returning my texts and emails? Yeah, it's pretty lonely out there. Ask Ken Paxton. Watch his interview with Tucker Carlson. And he'll tell you, he was out on that island, and he knows how it feels. He even said, I'm up against this, you know, multi-million dollar legal conglomerate by myself. I have to hire my own attorney. Why, 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 Ken? Yeah, well, now you know how it feels to be incarcerated, especially when you've been wrongfully convicted or you're actually innocent, or there's a question about a witness in your trial, or maybe one of the officers lied on the stand or maybe the prosecution never followed the statute word for word in the indictment in the complaint nor in the charge to the jury so it was never proven to the jury beyond reasonable doubt all elements of the offense 
for the conviction. Maybe. Hmm, maybe. Ken, sucks when you're out there on that island. Been there. Just imagine litigating against somebody who's in a wheelchair. Okay, and they're the defendant, you're the plaintiff, and you're filing a suit for, with the using the Americans with Disabilities Act. Okay, and the defendant is in a wheelchair, and they're fighting you. That would be Greg Abbott when he was Attorney General. Yeah. And of course, he won. A disabled person fighting the ADA, and he won. That's how ludicrous the whole system has gotten. And Greg Abbott was a Democrat before he was a Republican. And when it was convenient to turn Republican, he returned Republican. So don't think for a minute that some that Greg Abbott, some genuine, you know, red dyed in the wool conservative through and through. He's not. He's going to ride the wave. He's an opportunist. He's been doing it his entire life. He's a career politician. To protect the Supreme Court justice, attorney general, governor. I mean, you know, I don't even know what he was before all that. That guy's like triple dipping already in a, in a pension for a lifetime. Three. Yeah, he's getting paid. So anyway, let me get off that. All right, so that's Letitia James. Let me now, let me show you my concerns because I'm going to read you these uh, statutes. That's what I want right here. This is the most important one. I'm going to make this a long video. I was going to try to keep it short. Georgia Code, Title 16, Crimes and Offenses, Section 16-14-6, right here. A, any superior court may, after making due provisions for the rights of innocent persons, enjoin violations of Code Section 16-14-4, which I'll show you in a minute, by issuing appropriate orders and judgments, including, but not limited to, ordering any defendant, Donald J. Trump, to divest himself or herself of any interest in any enterprise, the Republican National Party, real property or personal property. <clears throat> yeah, you heard me right imposing reasonable restrictions upon the future activities or investments of any defendant, Donald J. Trump, including but not limited to prohibiting any defendant, Donald J. Trump, from engaging in the same type of endeavor as the enterprise, Republican National Party, in which he or she was engaged in violation of Code Section 16-14-4. Ordering the dissolution or reorganization of any enterprise, Republican National Party. Uh, let me uh, back that up. Ordering the dissolution. Stunner. Don't turn me on the game. All right. Here we go. Number three, ordering the dissolution or reorganization of the Republican National Party. Okay. If you want me to go back and I'll read one and two again. And then when we get to three, you'll be like, what? Ordering the suspension or revocation of any license, permit, or prior approval granted to any enterprise, Republican National Party, by any agency of the state, or 
ordering the forfeiture of the charter of a corporation organized under the laws of this state or the revocation of a certificate authorizing a foreign corporation to conduct business within the state upon a finding that the board of directors or a managerial agent acting on behalf of the corporation and conducting affairs of the corporation has authorized or engaged in conduct in violation of code section 1614-4 and that for the prevention of future criminal activity, the public interest requires that the charter of the corporation be forfeited and that the corporation be dissolved or that the certificate be revoked. Oh. Any aggrieved person or the state may institute a civil action under subsection A of this code section. In such civil action, relief may be granted in conformity with the principles that govern the granting of injunctive relief from threatened loss or damage in other civil cases, provided that no showing of special or irreparable damage to the person shall have, have to be made. Upon the execution of proper bond against damages for an injunction improvidently granted and a showing of immediate danger of significant loss or damage, a temporary restraining order, TRO, and a preliminary injunction may be issued in any such action before a final determination on the merits. Y'all like me to keep going with this? I'll just read you the last one. Okay. And this is Georgia. This is not New York. It's Georgia, so don't get the two confused. The former was New York. The latter, Georgia. Where we are right now, the latter, Georgia. Don't get them confused. A conviction in any criminal proceeding shall stop the defendant in any subsequent civil action or civil forfeiture proceeding under this chapter as to all matters proved in the criminal proceeding. Uh, that's huge, too. All right. I'm not making it up, folks. I'm reading you the law. Most people don't read the law. You're not educated to read the law you should be every child should learn the law be a part of your education growing up as a child that way when you turn 18 you can be a responsible adult <laughs> they're gonna treat you like a monster a monster oh it's a monster so uh let's see i address that i address that um, yeah, yeah, that one went wonky on me. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So, I know. Uh, let's see. Is this where I was at? Oh, yeah. Just so you know. You know, I'm not going to throw some bullshit at you guys, right? I'm not going to make some presumption. I'm going to use, as, as I told somebody today, yeah, it was yesterday, Wells Fargo investigator. <laughs> uh, I use their stuff. I don't use my stuff. My stuff doesn't count. I use their stuff. So we're going to go use their stuff as adopted by the Republican National Committee, the RNC, the Republican National Party, resolution regarding the Republican Party platform. Whereas the Republican National Committee, the RNC, has significantly scaled back the size and scope of the 2020 Republican National Convention in Charlotte due to strict restrictions on gatherings and meetings and out of concern for the safety of convention attendees and our hosts. Whereas the RNC has unanimously voted to forego the convention committee on platform in appreciation of the fact that it did not want a small contingent of delegates formulating a new platform without the breadth of perspectives within the ever-growing Republican movement. Well, thank you for that. Give a little applaud. A little applause, rather. Whereas all platforms are snapshots of the historical context in which they are born and parties abide by their policy priorities rather than their political rhetoric. Whereas the RNC, had the platform committee been able to convene in 2020, would have undoubtedly unanimously agreed to reassert the party's strong support for 
President Donald Trump and his administration. Whereas the media has outrageously misrepresented the implications of the RNC not adopting a new platform in 2020 and continues to engage in misleading advocacy for the failed policies of the Obama-Biden administration rather than providing the public with an unbiased reporting of facts and... Whereas the RNC enthusiastically supports President Trump and continues to reject the policy positions of the Obama-Biden administration, as well as those espoused by the Democratic National Committee today, therefore be it resolved that the Republican Party has and will continue to enthusiastically support the president's America First agenda. Resolved that the 2020 Republican National Convention will adjourn without adopting a new platform until... Until, until the 2024 Republican National Convention. So back that tape up that the Republican Party has and will continue to enthusiastically support the president's American First agenda. That the 2020 Republican National Convention calls on the media to engage in accurate and unbiased reporting, especially as it relates to the strong support of the RNC for President Trump and his administration. I'm almost ready to drop the mic. Hang on. And that any motion to amend the 2016 platform or to adopt a new platform, including any motion to suspend procedures that will allow doing so, will be ruled out of order. That's a microphone. Sounds like an organization. Sounds like an organization Trump was uh, very much uh, incorporated with at the time. You guessed it. That's some good arithmetic you there just put together. One and one plus two. And I believe uh, that will do it. Yeah, I think I covered everything. I just want to give you that big old bombshell and drop that mic on you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. Now, in my opinion, what do I think? This is what I think. I think the Democrats can do anything they can to continue to retain as much power as they can for as long as they can. We keep hearing about this alleged deep state that's going to come out and save everybody, that the military is really in control. And they're making all these arrests and trials and military, you know, trials, tribunals and uh, executions and People are allegedly being locked up in this new vast expansion of Guantanamo Bay in Cuba. Uh, yeah, who the hell knows? Has anybody seen it? No. Is there any leaked footage of it? Leaked indictments? Leaked complaints? Trial records? You know, just you know, do you do not get a chance to appeal a military tribunal? Especially if you're sentenced to death. I mean, if you get sentenced to death, you mean, is that it? No appeals? That's a wrap? I don't think that's how American jurisprudence works. So I really, I mean, if it's that case, you need to bring that shit over here to Texas, man, so we can use that on our death row uh, inmates. Because I know some of them don't want to just survive for 20 years. You know, some of them don't even make it to the, to the gurney. <laughs> He's died of old age. All the cases on repeal. So, yeah, if y'all got some uh, newfangled wango, dango, whip it up, tango uh, legal process to expedite uh, an appellate process and then post conviction on this, I guess, federal level. Yeah, 2255. Uh, let us know. I think we'd like to use it, spread it around. Spread the wealth. I hope you like my little uh, video here on uh, Friday night on Trump, the RICO, the Republican Party, the authority of some judge in Georgia. 
with the broke of a pen can change the world literally overnight. I don't know what that would look like. Imagine if they hit them both at the same time, dissolve the Republican National Party in October of next year, 2024. Same day or same week, boom, Trump gets indicted for a RICO with all his family in New York. Warrants are issued for their arrest because they're a flight risk. I hope none of that comes true. But you see that the door is wide open for that potentiality to occur. I don't vote. I don't think voting matters anymore. There's so much corruption on just the whole process. You know, if I can... I take this twenty dollar bill, this twenty dollar bill, and there's there's a gazillion of these things floating around, a gazillion. Okay, if I took this and put it in over here in my scanner and made a copy of it, okay, and went and passed it in some store that had a video camera. And that 20 is going to end up in a bank and get scanned and get found as counterfeit. And they're going to trace it back to that video camera in that store to me, to me, giving it to the teller. Why can't we track votes? We do it with lottery tickets. We do it with our funny money. It's available. They just don't want it. Because don't think that just one side cheats. They both cheat. It's just who can cheat the best and the most and get away with it. Because apparently you have to control the state to get away with widespread election fraud. At least your party does. And then sometimes you don't have a firm grip and one member of your party is still in there and able to do something about it, but they don't. If you don't think there was any election fraud, you need to have your head examined. Might as well go get in line with the liberal Democrats because they're, they're mentally ill. I'm not going to call you retarded or nothing. I'm not even going to say you're mentally ill, but you should go get in line with the with the de Democrats. Like, subscribe, share, hit that notification bell. Leave a comment below if you want to reach me, thefearlessfloydshow at yahoo.com. Thefearlessfloydshow.com is my website. Thefearlessfloydshow at yahoo.com if you want to email me. I'm the Fearless Floyd Show across every social media platform you can look at. I may not participate in them, but my name's there the placeholder. You can always find me on Telegram. That's the easiest way. That's the backbone of my platform. I'm going to come out with some more videos. When got tons of material, it's just me shooting them, just not in the mood. I want to go back to Puerto Rico. This place sucks. There's so much stress, it sucks. Puerto Rico is wonderful. I don't want to go back. Puerto! 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 Y'all have a good night. Good weekend. Be safe. Be happy. Peace in the Middle East. Go, go RVing. Please. Please.